Welcome to Sit Down and Heal with Coach Derek. My name is Derek Jones and I am your host. Um, what we typically do here is we talk about healing topics and as they relate to relationships. And um, the name says it all. Sometimes we need to heal. Sometimes we need to sit down and heal because we're doing too much. So today, the topic is the five toxic love languages. This um, this show is going to spotlight how people can use these love languages to their advantage in a manipulative way. And that's why we call it toxic. So let's get started. Um, and if you do not know where to find me, sit down and is open 24 hours a day, but we'll talk about that later. So let's talk about the five toxic love languages, right? We, we typically, well, most of us know what love languages are. You know, we didn't know them all our lives, but we figured it out. And now we kind of, you know, we ask the question, what's your love language? Or we try to find out what our, what our own love language is. And, you know, this is the quality time and the, and the acts of service and the, and the, um, the words of affirmation and all of these things, right? And so your love language, how you need to be loved, how you want to be loved, we're going to turn, we're going to turn this on its head tonight. So pay attention to where I'm going to go because we're going on a journey. So these are ways, just for clarification, that people can utilize a love language for manipulation for their own selfish reasons. Because, see, the love languages that we know and love, there's no negative connotation to it. It's just how you like to receive love, right? So let's go down the list of five, and we're not going to be here long. We're going to get y'all out here early tonight. Quality time. How can somebody use quality time to their selfish advantage? And we're going to talk about why these things happen. Quality time. But one sided quality time. Pay attention. This is when you're only doing what they want to do and never do what you want to do. So let me explain. Somebody asks you or tells you that their love language is quality time. But that quality time is only for them. You see no benefit out of it. And so you turn into someone who has to pander to it just so the other person feels happy. You get it? The quality time for them is a selfish act that's just for them. And they don't even care if you are the type of person to even try to do it. Right? So in this case, if your partner says my, my, um, Love language is quality time. You both should enjoy it, right? To a certain extent. And I know somebody's going to say, well, what if I'm just not the type of person to spend quality time and I'm just doing it for them? Well, a lot of you that are here in the comments know what happens when you do everything that the other person want to do and never what you want to do. It's not, it's not a happy life to live, right? That's what I'm talking about. All the time you spend. Emphasis on the word all. And you know, I never use absolute statements here. All of the time is for what they want. That's not is that. Is that what we want? Y'all? We don't want that. But they will say they need their love language. But there's always context to everything, right? Sometimes there's a dialogue about how you need to show up for them. But for this type of person, the dialogue doesn't happen. They get pissed off when you don't feel like doing what they want all the time. Who been in that relationship? They mad at you because you're not always doing what they want. And when you want to do something, they like, I'm, I'm good. It's ugly, ain't it? We, we going to go down this list. And then we're going to go back to the why. There's always a why. So, acts of service, right? When that person needs you to do something for them, 
versus giving them a gift versus touching them. This is their primary thing. I want to see you do some acts to make me feel validated that I'm feeling love from you, right? But we're going to call this, instead of acts of service, we're going to call this acts of self-abandonment. Let's define this. Acts of self-abandonment, not acts of service. It's when you do something for them, but it comes from a place of feeling drained and resentful, right? So it's similar to the first one. You're doing something for them like an acts of service, but it's coming from a place where you're just like, let me just let the, let me shut them up. We don't want that person either, do we? Let me just, I'm tired, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway, just so they can shut up. Uh, and then the other person is like, I'm getting what I want. They're not worried about you. Who've been in that relationship? Put a one in the comment. If you ever been the person, see, this is what I know is going to happen. Put a one in the comments. If you ever been the person where you've been in a relationship and it wasn't the way it's supposed to be and you kind of resented the person a little bit, but you you just did the stuff for them anyway because they needed it. <sighs> oh, we're going to get there, Meeks. We're going to get there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where y'all think yes dear came from <laughs> let me stop so look <laughs> you know why there's a bunch of ones in the comments because most of the people that, that come to my lab are empaths we worry about us last so that asking for the ones was kind of rhetorical because I know I know who comes here even if I don't know you so when we call this acts of self-abandonment instead of acts of service, the services come from you abandoning anything about yourself. You can't even have a voice or vocalize your needs because you have to abandon self to serve the other person so that you believe that there will be a peaceful household. We're going we're gonna to bring this around in, at the end, but we got to get through the first part first. Now, this next one, y'all going to know, too. Gifts. If you have a partner whose love language is receiving gifts, this is how we turn it on his head. Gifts for trade is what we're calling this one. Now, this is what I mean. I'm going to give you a gift. I'm the partner, right? But I'm going to give you a gift for the sole purpose of knowing that you're going to give me one back. So if I want a gift, I'm going to give you something first. So you'll be compelled to give me what I want so that I feel like my love language is being served. Right? It's manipulation at its finest. I've been in relationships where <clears throat> they wanted a gift. And they did this very thing, but they gave me something tiny to get something big. <laughs> and if you didn't reciprocate with the big thing, ooh, they was pissed. Anybody know about this one? They want to give so bad, but they don't want to just ask for it outright. So they're going to give you something, just a little token. So that you can be like, oh, I got to get them something too. Instead of them receiving the gifts from the kindness of your heart, they're going to force it. Right? So then we look at that love like just a little bit differently tonight. Now, this next one, I think all of y'all are going to know. Physical touch. How many people have a love language of physical touch, but in this toxic way, and I and you know what? Let me preface this. For some of y'all, this isn't going to be toxic for you because y'all like it like this. This person, this partner, their love language is physical touch, but it's only for the bedroom. It's transactional. We're not talking about holding hands, affectionate touch. It's only for the bedroom. And that's it. 
So if you want me to hug on you and kiss you and do, we not doing that. That's not the kind of love language I want. <laughs> that's why I say some of y'all gonna be like, she, that's all I want. But you're probably in a situation though, right? Some of y'all were like, never mind. It's a judgment free zone. All right. So we're going to go to the last one. Words of affirmation, which is my, which is my primary. In this case, we're going to call it words of self deprecation. So this is what we mean. So here's an example. Why would someone as awesome as you like me? Now this is what your partner is telling you. Y'all know these people if you're not this person. You downplay yourself so that you can force a compliment. You ain't gotta raise your hand, but some of y'all in the comments did this before. You downplay yourself to force them to tell you that you that you're the opposite of what you feel bad about. Oh no, you're a great person. Don't worry about all that stuff you complain about. You're amazing. And you like and the other person's like, thank you. Yeah, Sun LT. It happens every day and twice on Sundays. We know these people. They almost never have positive things to say about themselves. They're not going anywhere, but they need for you to keep affirming them all the time. I've dated a few of these. Everything was just, I'm not good enough. I see that lady over there, but I'll never be like her. I'm not cute. And I'm like, um, yes, you are. I wouldn't be with you if you wasn't beautiful. And they're like, you just saying that because you with me. And then they, and then it's like, give me more. <laughs> Oh, it's a thing. <laughs> it's a big thing, Mika Nation. We're going to talk about the why of all of these. I just wanted to give you the, the, the definitions of them first, right? But yes, it happens on people in the comments. If you've heard of someone like this or been this person, put a one in the comment. And then I'm going to show you something, Mika. Put a one, the one in the comment. If you were this person or, knew, or know somebody like this. And I know there's like a delay. See? Sometimes it's subtle. And we're not talking about people with low self-esteem. We're talking about people who need the words of affirmation to come from you, but they want it when they want it. So they so they create the environment to where you will do it. Now, it could be a little bit of low self-esteem, too, right? They kind of go together, but it, it's not always. These are people that manipulate you into giving them compliments because they need to hear it to feel validated. Right. So 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 because I am your healing journey coach, we're going to talk about some some healing stuff here. And I'm going to tell you the why, right? So you'll understand how this works and why some of you need to heal. So we talked about the, quali the one-sided quality time where you're doing everything that they want to do, but nothing that you want to do, right? It stinks of narcissism, doesn't it? They always want their way. There's trauma behind that. But they will call it the love language. Pay attention. Sometimes your love language is attached to your trauma. I will say it again. Sometimes what you claim as your love language is attached to your trauma. This is why we heal here so that you can realize and be self-aware of who you are underneath it all. So that when you do say a love language, it's attached to the more healed version of yourself. Breathe. Sometimes there are selfish people 
who don't even think about what you want because their validation and their need for them to get what they want is bigger than making you happy because trauma can I expound on it so we had the narcissist show right and I told you in that show that most narcissists have a trauma foundation that created that person right that person, depending on who they are, and I'm not saying that this person is a narcissist. I'm saying people like this who only care about what needs their needs getting met and not yours. It's a selfish act. And sometimes it comes from a traumatic background where maybe they never got what they wanted. And so now they feel like they need to control the narrative because of the trauma, right? Most likely from childhood. So now they're going to tell you that they want quality time, but they ain't worrying about you. Because remember, what I teach you here is when you are dealing with a traumatic lens, it's the way you see the world, the way you color the world. You making it feel better supersedes your need to make the other person happy. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me not say that here because you're going to be like, they supposed to already be happy M to, to, to make the other person feel like they're a part of the relationship in a healthy way, right? So they'll tell you that, they're, that, they're, that their love language is quality time, but then there's, they, it's like a hard stop. They're not trying to negotiate what that looks like for both of you. It's all about them, right? We're gonna go through these because at the end of this, even if it's not you, hopefully it'll point a spotlight into you thinking more about yourself and who you are and maybe you need to heal right the acts of self-abandonment where you abandon yourself for them that's a childhood wound a lot of these kids that grow up like this they were forced to grow up really fast they had to be the head of the household when they was 10 they didn't have a choice to care about themselves. They had to handle things. When this kid grows up, they sacrifice as like a default setting. So when they find a person that wants to siphon that off of them, they don't really speak up because they feel like they're supposed to do it. Right. There's many flavors to this. I'm just giving you these examples because I want you to understand. When. The person who is telling you that they that their. Love language is acts of service and then you kind of people please and pander to it. And they're kind of manipulating you into doing it because you're tired, you're drained and you're like, I got to do it because if I don't, they're going to be mad. It's that. There's something in you that needs to be healed because you're not happy. The, the, the gift giving for trade, the person's giving you something so that you can give it back. That level of manipulation comes from a place too. And sometimes people do it not even consciously thinking until somebody like checks and be like, what you doing? But most of the time, the person that's doing, they don't even, you don't even know that you're being manipulated until later. Because some people are addicted to gifts. They have to have it. Even if that means they need to manipulate you to get it. So it speaks of a little girl or a little boy who maybe never got them as a kid. So this is no judgment, but we know people who grew up with nothing. And when they grow up, they have to overdo to show the world that they're not that kid. When I blow into the microphone, that's just time for us to 
to to some people are being triggered right now. They're not gonna raise their hand and not breathe to release and think for a second, and then we get back to it. That's why I do that. Because here at Relationship Gumbo Coaching, we do a lot of deep topics, and I know that some of these things bring back memories and they trigger you, but you're in a place where I can take care of you because I am the Healing Journey Coach. So, the touch, physical touch, but it's only for the bedroom. There are some people that have a past and we're not going to go into what that past looks like where the only way that they receive and show love is through the bedroom only. I can't say the S, S word, but the bedroom activities is the only way that they validate and show and receive love comes from a place because all of the other things and the sensitivities are numb this, this is the person they don't they're not really affectionate but they'll sleep with you they don't really like kissing they don't do none of that this is how they know that you love them right so i'm saying it without saying it you guys know what i'm talking about yes i didn't i don't know tiktok rules i'm not trying to say too much you follow me? So so this person with all of that history will tell you that their love language is physical touch. But it has some it has some extra context to it. Right? And some and a lot of times, this is why the shadow work workshop that I have is so important. Sometimes you will behave like this and not even realize it because it's subconscious. Because that inner child is doing this. The conscious version of you is just like, oh, it, it's, this is just who I am. And a little kid inside of you is like, nah, we need something to make us feel safe. And that bedroom is the only place that we know that we can feel love. Now, the last one. Yep. All of that. All of that, Meeks. The words of self-deprecation or affirmation, it will it will mostly times deal with low self-worth, self-love, self-esteem. And you will tell someone that you like and need words of affirmation. And it really comes from a place of you feeling down about yourself. That you're in a relationship with a person that always has to jump and tell you that you're great all the time so that you don't turn into a basket case. Healing, guys. Self-awareness. We got to figure it out. Or we will be in relationships doing all of these things and calling it happy, and it's not. We will suffer in silence we have done it in multiple relationships some of you have been in enough of them to stop dating period but it doesn't solve any of this it will come back so think about that we ain't going to be on here too much longer. I told you I'm going to get y'all out here early because y'all got to get y'all popcorn for the debates and all that. Yep. Healing and self-awareness is two things that most humans have not done or are unaware of. We function in society. Black Star, you can get it right with the right tools. I know, right? <laughs> If I did this at nine o'clock, it'd be three people on here. So what I'll do in the interest, actually, no, I can't do that. Not on here because I, I, I don't want to put anybody's like I was going to say we can do. Actually, you know what? I can do it. I can just clip it. So let's do this. I'll give you some time to, to do Q&A 
It doesn't have to be about this topic. It can be about any topic that's related to healing journeys, relationships or whatever. I'm not going to do a lot of it. Why? Because we have a free Zoom this Thursday where we we the, the floor is open and you'll have access to me. You'll be able to ask your questions. You'll be able to listen to other people's questions and realize that we're more alike than we are different. The only way that you can get to that Zoom is to join my Sit Down and Heal coaching community, which is on my site. When you get into the community, it's at the top of the page. You click that and that's where the, the, um, the Zoom link is. So for all of y'all that don't want to type questions because there's so many people in here, this is your opportunity to, to get it done. Because who wants to keep repeating cycles? And who wants to keep saying I'm working on myself and you're really not? You're just sitting at home. So, we're going to wrap this up. If you want to understand and know what I do, go to sitdownandheal.com. Um, if you are on TikTok, it is in the link in the bio. Um, and just go there and look around. Just click everything. And then if you have questions, you can inbox me on TikTok or through the messaging in the actual uh, website slash app. So, we're wrapping the show up. I appreciate everybody that has come. This week, next week, we're going to have another amazing show every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Sit down and hear what Coach Derek is live on TikTok. And the replay of this will be on YouTube within 24 hours-ish. So thank you guys for coming. See you next time. All right. That's where I'm going to cut it for YouTube. So you guys can ask questions for like 10 minutes. If you want to. But y'all better be here on Thursday anyway at 8 p.m. on in the in, in the Zoom so y'all can because y'all y'all be playing. Let me let me tell y'all something. I love y'all. Y'all be playing around and and rescheduling y'all healing and y'all know y'all need to get in. Y'all know y'all sitting at home with questions like I wonder why he's doing. I wonder what this day. I wonder what. Here's your opportunity. Whatever, boogie. Whatever. If you don't come, it's okay. But I know you're going to be there. I'll, You know what? I will send it to you in the Discord, like the actual direct link, so you don't have to worry about all the, the fluff. Well, actually, no, I can't do that because they need to be in the community like you are. So... So, so the language, right, Meeks? There's no such thing as truly healed. You'll be doing it forever. So what you learn through, through a lot of the things that I teach here, well, not here, TikTok, but here in coaching, the language that you use, attracting narcs, attracting a narc is never the problem. Listen to my words. Attracting a narcissist is not the problem. Staying with one is. When you see the signs and feels it doesn't feel right and you stay, that's the problem. It's not attracting them. It's that you stay too long. But when you go through coaching through me, I can help you identify the traits and the signs before it gets to the part that y'all hate. The biggest way to overcome rejection is to work on your self-esteem and your self-worth and your self-love. We do that here, too. It's not the rejection that upsets you. It's that the strength in you to be okay around it isn't there. Well, that's a that's a good way to in, enact your boundaries, then, as long as you walk away when it happens. But here I teach you to, to, to see the signs before it even gets to a relationship. Or very early. But you got to, you got to, um, you know, you got to mess with me a little bit. You got to get some coaching, got to get some of this he healing in so that you can be strong enough to face rejection, to face narcissists, to play, face players. <laughs> Most people who, who manipulate have a tell, right? Like poker. 
you just have to have an awareness about yourself to to be able to to have a radar for it and i teach you that here how much emphasis should someone put on love languages i wouldn't i wouldn't um i would say i wouldn't say emphasis i would say if you have a partner that's willing to share what it is, it's good information to 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 key in on, to understand, and they're and they're teaching you and showing you how to love them. So it is important, whether you believe in the love languages or not. It's really about taking the time to understand your partner, whatever that means. So it is important. So don't necessarily take the five love languages and say this is the law, and if we don't know them, to learn your partner. And the love languages will just magically appear. And you'll be like, oh, they like this. Oh, they told me they want this. Oh, they said they like this. To, to go. You know, you, you learn by dialogue. So it's not like this thing that you just have like a little book and you check it off. It's very fluid. Yeah, that's true too, Beeks. Unfortunately, most people don't have that. If they did, I, I wouldn't even be able to be a coach. Because trauma. No problem, beauty. See, the discernment and the boundaries and all of that, all of that matters not when you've been through some stuff. You ain't even looking through a discernment lens when you're dating. That's why you keep getting got. So you got to come to the relationship gumbo gym and we got to build you up so that when you go back outside, you'd be like, nah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This 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 more healed version of me, it's just it don't even. Uh, I know I haven't even met you yet, but something ain't. Uh, Cause Coach Derek told me about the word choices and the in the in the open ended questions, and it's not it's not, it's not doing. You gonna feel it early. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't. Hold on. I I have to look. Oops. I'm looking over here at y'all, but the, the pen stuff is on here. Hold on. So whether you believe it or not, thank you for reminding me that the um I have to look at look down. So 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 in the conventional sense, yes, you could say that there is a such thing as a soul tie. Right. And I'm going to and I'm the, you know, engineer brain. So I have to I, I can't just give you like a like a. I have to give you multiple perspectives because we're all different, right? So we would say, yes, there is a such thing as a soul tie, right? But for those of you who don't believe in a soul tie, we're just simply talking about attachment, right? And here I teach you about attachment styles, right? So whether you believe in soul ties or not, attachments are real, right? So we're going to use them interchangeably, right? Because some people will say soul ties more spiritual and all these other things, right? Cool. If that's what you believe, cool. The solution is still the same, though. You're going to have to work on yourself, heal yourself, become a stronger, convicted version of yourself so that that tie doesn't feel as strong as it did. All it really is is an attachment style. You can call it soul tie or not, but when you attach for whatever reason, and a lot of those reasons come from childhood and you really latch on to someone. It's hard to let go because it's not just your conscious mind. It's your shadow. It's your subconscious that is grabbing onto them. You don't know how to control that because it's subconscious. And that's why we learn about ourselves here so that when you do get into these situations, you understand where it comes from. So I hope that makes sense. It's just an attachment, right? A soul tie. Yeah, a soul tie, right? Looks just like someone with an anxious attachment style. They just can't let go. So you could call it that, too, because I know some people is like, I'm more spiritual and I believe it's a soul tie. Cool. But you're still going to have to work on yourself. You're still going to have to work on you. There's not one person that's broken a soul tie that didn't have to do any soul searching 
and figuring out things about them so they can break it. Same solution. So the answer to your question is yes, there is. <laughs> and you break it by mastering self. See, most people who attach, listen to the words, to people that they create these ties with don't realize that the reason why you're attaching to them comes from your childhood. That's why you can't break it because the little girl picked them, not you. That's why you can't see it. So here I teach you how to realize who that little girl is so that we can tell her that we taking over now. Thank you. You're safe. I got it. Once you become that person, then you're using your more logical brain. So when you pick, it's different. People in here that's been on the healing journey, like like Tanya B, they'll tell you the world look different once you get on the other side of 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 that initial hump of getting yourself together and healing. You you won't even the 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 way you pick and the things you see is gonna be like night and day. So it'll make more sense because you're looking for alignment, which comes from here, versus attachment, which comes from here. See, if you're looking for someone to align with you, then you got some check boxes to check off. You got behavior to watch, nonverbal cues, all the things I teach you here. So, you know, I keep saying I teach you here, but y'all ain't listening to me. I teach you these things because no one else ever taught us. See, a lot of y'all are going to get off of here and be like, got it. You don't. You have a lifetime of that little kid picking for you. You don't have the skills. And you know who else knows you don't have the skills? Narcissists. Predators and players you can't defeat a person who is designed to break your boundaries when you have none i'm going to say it for time number one million and one the first thing that a predatory dater is looking for is how to break past your boundaries. So they're coming for the empaths. They're coming for the people pleasers. They're coming for the fixers. They're coming for the low self-esteem. It's very easy to qualify these things in a day or two. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See, I am a trained pattern recognizer in my professional life as an engineer, in my coaching life as a person who's an expert at human behavior. Patterns don't lie. Nonverbal behavior doesn't lie. See, you think I'm looking at the clock because I know y'all y'all want to go look at the debates. You think. See, let me, I've said this so many times, but I, I need for y'all to hear when I say this and I need for it to stick this time. Most coaches will tell you if you tell the person too much about yourself, if you give too much personal information about what you like and all this, they're going to have like all the information to play you. Wrong. 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 The verbal information is a part, like 10%. That's not how they play you. They play you because they're watching your behavior and your movements and the boundaries that you cross. See, let me let me let me tell you something. If you say I never kiss anyone on the first date, then you meet me and you say, "You know what? I never do this, but I'm going to do it for you because I like you and you're different." What blueprint did you give me? Nothing. What I received is that a boundary was broken. A rule was broken for me because you like me so much. You didn't give me a blueprint of nothing. 
You get it? How you behave speaks louder than your mouth does. That's how you get played. And again, there is zero manipulation tactics that can defeat your no. See, when you have rules that you stick by and you break a bunch of them for me, you're going to break all of them for me. You can't let like be strong enough to, to, for your boundary. Like should not be enough. You don't even have enough evidence that they even supposed to be in your face and you are already breaking your, your boundaries and your rules for them. It's earned. And if you qualifying people to earn it, you ain't got to be nasty. It's, it's here. And they don't like the boundaries. That's not your man or your woman. Keep it moving. But we won't. Why? Because we don't want to keep trying again. We're going to make this one work. We're going to mold this one. Mm -mm. Because you don't want to be by yourself. So you keep going. That's why when you when you come to relationship gumbo coaching, I teach you how to be OK by yourself in those moments where no one is checking for you. Cool. I've achieved a level of peace. But when I do decide to be with somebody, they're not going to be able to shake me because they took me to a nice dinner. They're not going to shake me because they told me they're going to take me on a trip or they're going to do. No. I have rules. You haven't earned the right to be in my personal space yet, sir. We got more information to gather. Yeah, Meeks. That R&B. It'll do it every time. Y'all, see, that's why y'all need to come to the Zoom on Thursday. There's a wealth of information here. Y'all just be, I don't know. You keep leaning into your own understanding that hasn't worked for you for your whole life. Like, get some new information. That's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to help y'all. And I'm not saying I know everything, but I'm a hell of a pattern recognizer. I can tell you about yourself in two minutes. And those of you who have talked to me and shared, like, what they need coaching for will tell you that I can, I, I will have you summed up in minutes. It doesn't take long. It's not just me saying that. There's not one person that, that has that has talked to me about what they need and did not give you the steps and the stuff you need to get. Who can say that I did not have you pegged? Your behavior does not lie. The reason why I peg you so fast is because I'm a master at the nonverbal stuff. Like you'll tell me this whole story about who hurt you and this is and you've been divorced for five years and all of this. And I'm like, OK, so what'd you do? And then the what you do tells me who you are. Once I know who you are, then I can help fix it. It's not the people you dated. It's how you moved. How you moved tells me who you are. That's why I be telling y'all, don't give me a whole novel in the in the um in the inbox about what you need. Let me ask you what I need and then I'll tell you who you are. It's very it's very once once you get let me tell you something. Once I teach you how to be like me, right? And Boogie's Boogie's a affectionately called a graduate of, of my of my coaching. Once I give you these skills, you'll be able to create character profiles of people like this. Then you can decide whether you're going to stay or not before you get emotionally attached. You can see them coming a mile away once you get this skill set. That doesn't mean that it's perfect, but you're going to save a lot of time. See, it's not just dating advice here. I'm going to solve you from the foundation 
So we're talking about shadow work and inner child. We're talking about attachment styles. We're talking about creating healthy boundaries. We're talking about the things that trigger you and how to how to manage yourself around the triggers better. Not just the triggers that you know about, but the ones that's going to happen that you don't know about. You'll have a baseline of tools to help you deal with all triggers. Right. So when you have that foundation, then we move into the dating and relationship section. And then we talk about how you date better, how you ask questions, what to look for, how to how to know the scent that you give off to a predator like a narcissist. What is it about you that makes you attractive to them? And then we talk about how do you recognize body language and word choices and voice inflections so that you can paint a character profile of the person so they don't even know that you know more about them than they've told you. It works. See, the stuff that I teach you here. Hold on. How long would you say it takes to heal from an unhealthy relationship? So here's the thing. You, you don't put a time on healing. Right here, here, here's here's the better answer, right? A person who 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 knows they need to heal, but don't get help. then You won't heal at all. A person who doesn't get help, you can still heal, but where are you getting the information from? Not your parents, not your friends. You might listen to a couple podcasts, but that's not habit form changing. You get it? So for some people, it could be faster than others, but I'm not going to tell you, oh, it takes six months or whatever, because some people don't, ain't going to never get it. That's why that's why I help you guys so that you can have directive and you can have um, processes to go through and have milestones so that you know that you're ready. But without it, I couldn't tell you. Some people never get it. It's people, you know, that think they know everything and they didn't watch all the podcasts and they still they still dating the same way because the trauma is still there. You understand? I don't care how much information you soak in. If you do not know how to implement it in your life, you are not changed. The inner child will run your life. No matter how much information that you read, no matter how much information that you listen to on these lives, it's not going to change your habits habits do not change overnight you will continue to have the same results because that little kid is still looking to be loved to be validated to not be abandoned that doesn't go away no matter how many well i used to date this type of person but i think i'll get better results if i date somebody the opposite of them you're still the same And then when you date the opposite person, you're like, dang, that didn't work either. Yeah, because you didn't you didn't heal. Without direction, without milestones, your healing will take forever, like the first part. But even the people who have been on a healing journey, it's it's every day. Something can trigger you like you don't just get over it and just be OK. You learn to manage yourself better, not delete it. Now, I'll give you this example, and then I'm going to get off of here. And I say this all the time so that you guys can understand it. Once upon a time, somebody hurt you, right? They hurt you really bad. And go back in time. Maybe you was like a teenager or like in your 20s and you was in a relationship and you got hurt really bad. It's a long time ago, right? Devastated, heartbroken. Whatever age you are right now, you remember what that felt like. And if you think about it long enough, you might start to feel it again. It was never deleted. You learned how to manage your life around it so it didn't affect you as much. It's the same thing with healing. Management, not deletion. It's a part of you. So you have to work in sync with it so that it doesn't run you. Yeah, it makes it is. But 
that that is the choice that a lot of people make. They're like, oh, I've been with all these attractive people. Let me let me be with somebody that's not so attractive and I'll get different results. Sometimes unattractive people don't give a damn about your feelings either. So and, and I'm not saying that there's a, a, a you know, somebody's going to be like, he called somebody ugly or he didn't know. I'm just saying whatever you find to be unattractive. I know y'all. So. We're going to go ahead and land a plane. I appreciate you guys, but y'all need to come on Thursday to the Zoom. Click the link in the bio and go to the Sit Down and Heal Coaching Community link and just do what it asks you to do. And then you'll see the link for Thursday's Zoom and you'll get the Zoom information there. Um... <laughs>